Hey, what's the deal, YouTube? It's your girl, Miss Honey. Welcome back to the channel, you guys. It is your girl, Miss Honey. It is Sunday, December 15th, and we are here to do Real Housewives of Atlanta, Married to Medicine. First, um, Real Housewives of Atlanta. Uh, I think this is episode seven, What Would Michelle Do? Um, the episode is named this because uh, at various times people bring up uh, Michelle Obama and or a Michelle Obama quote. So we see um, Cynthia and Kenya. Uh, Kenya comes over to Cynthia. Cynthia is getting ready for Mike to, um, if not move in, to be to have more of a presence in the home so that when he does come he's not living out of his suitcase and she's you know got some things put up for him got space for his things that type of thing um they also talk just really briefly about mark and um how Kenya is dealing with the whole Mark thing. I, what It's just weird to me that we see them and they're in this, you know, huh? Yeah, you know, she's, Cynthia's talking about how big and grandiose Kenya's breasts are and they're talking about the closet, but it doesn't look like they bring up at all what went on at the baby cube. <clears throat> how they kind of had like a little run in at the Bailey Q. I, I mean, I don't know that they didn't talk about it. I'm just saying it, it wasn't filmed for us to see. I, I just, okay. Um, so, you know, Kenya is giving her grief about, you know, wanting him to move in or moving so fast with Mark and I mean, uh, with Mike and not being patient. And Cynthia does point out um, accurately that Mark and Kenya, you know, knew each other for a few months and got married. So, basically, Cynthia really doesn't want to hear it. Um, let's see what else. So, they also talk about the fact that Kenya showed up at Marlo's event with the band and... I don't know. Cynthia never said you were wrong. You went too far. It, it, she just, you know, kind of skirted around it. It it is what it is. They they're gonna get a closet planning company to come in and help her with the closet, which is who she should have called in, in the first place instead of Kenya. But it was a good opportunity to film. We see Candy and Carmen because um Candy and Todd and those, they're getting ready for Kayla to leave and to go um, to New York to live. We learn a lot in these moments. First, we got to see Carmen come over. Um, we haven't seen Carmen in a while. And they talk about Todd. Todd's got a lot of irons in the fire, a lot of businesses, a lot of businesses, business ideas. Um, he's bought a semi truck. He they bought a Mexican restaurant. I think she said the restaurant business is not. I mean, there's a lot of overhead. I think there's a lot of um, what do you call it when you when you have a product that goes bad. Uh, or can spoil like you need to sell it if we buy steaks and meat and, and veggies and for salads like you need to be pushing the salads pushing the salmon like it's it's that type of thing where you get, there's a lot of profit loss a high profit loss margin I think that's what it is my honeybees y'all know about business and especially the rest of my business put please put it down below but um <clears throat> Also, she's got a lipstick business. The difference in Candy and Todd is that Candy seems to follow through on a lot of her ideas. Um, I don't know what's going on with her and Todd. We'll learn a little bit more next week. Uh, we know now that Todd and Kayla, even though they seem to have this moment last week, that 
they're not speaking right now. And we learn from Candy that it's the same way with Riley. Riley goes through moments where she don't want to deal with him. She don't want to talk to him. Everybody want to talk to Candy. Don't nobody want to talk to Todd. It's so weird because when Kayla comes down, um, Ace to me is just, he is just the, the rose in the pile of poop. I'm not saying that their they whole thing is a pile of poop. He just is so lively and energetic and complimentary. And I'm telling you, the energy um, that Candy and her family give off, it's a very low, 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 low energy. Like no one, everyone is just, is just semi moist. You know, I'm not gonna call them dry. I'm trying to stop calling people. Um, you know, talking about people and labeling people, but it's just semi moist. Let me just say that. I, I might as well say dry. I guess it's the same thing. But when Kayla comes downstairs and the nanny's in the kitchen cooking, and um it seems like they have a better relationship. It seems like they talk great. It seems like everybody can talk to <laughs> to the nanny. I, it's so odd. It's so weird. And Candy comes down and she's asking her questions. And I guess they all get it. But it's just it, it's just odd. It's odd that the girls, um, you know, that there's this layer of, of the family. There's this dynamic that even though they're dry with one another, with other people, they seem very bubbly and very fun. Um, even Candy just seems like she's a little bit more energetic with people outside of the family. Same thing with Riley, um, Kayla, and the nanny. Ace is just springing joy and fantasticness all over the place, but the actual core of the family, ugh, it seems like it is a bit strained. It seems a bit strained. Um, I don't know. Y'all tell me what y'all think. Put it down below. Um, I spent way too much time on that. Marlo and Portia uh, do the pedal bus. I don't know exactly what it's called. I would never be caught doing it. I'm not pedaling. I'm not pedaling. And I love bike riding. Um, but... Yeah, well, evidently you can have drinks and a hookah and all of that and pedal and my back to the street or the sidewalk. Like, I'm not interested in it. I need to be facing forward so I can see both sides. It's odd. Um, they talk about um, Portia. Well, really, it's Marlo fishing. And let me just say this. I really didn't understand why Kenya went so far and being so, so disrespectful to Marlo. But one of my beautiful, beautiful honeybees got down below in the comment for last week's episode and told me all the stuff that Marlo has done. A lot of which I have forgotten. It turns out that she has been quite horrible to Kenya. <laughs> I just think that the um it made Marlo feel bad and that was her her major accomplishment was knocking her off her square. If that was her goal, Kenya, then she accomplished that. I do think at the end of the day it made her look bad. I just think it makes her look bad. Um and it's one thing to be shady, but if the blowback is going to get all in your face and all in your hair, is it really worth it? Is it really worth it? So, like I said, Marlo is fishing for info with Portia. And Portia is rightfully so cautious. She stands ten toes down. Not just on the whole um, situation with her and Dennis. And not getting involved with talking a lot about the situation. And she also stands ten toes down with regards to Nene. How Nene treated her and how Nene made her feel. And she is not budging on that. I'm super, super proud of Portia. We see where Greg and Nene are together. She's really expecting her life coach. We just get to see little wisps of Greg here and there. Um, when her life coach comes in, her life coach looks like she might be um, 
one of the ex Vanity Six girls. You know, she's got a little, just got a little edge to her a little bit. She looked like she might be uh, a um, a uh, um, S and M madam, mistress, <laughs> a dominatrix uh, at night. Um, Nene just catches her up. Greg, Greg and I are talking more and communicating more, and he has admitted some things. Of course, he had to admit it. You, you don't admit anything. You don't take accountability for anything. So I just think it helped me heal just to hear him say that he had done some things. Like I told y'all a couple of episodes ago, Nene doesn't forgive. Greg is still apologizing for getting cancer. I stand by that. Um, she talks about Marlo's event. Of course, she makes the whole thing about her that Kenya came with a band and she just got so upset. She felt like if she stayed there any longer, she was going to cuss Kenya out. And she, um, knows Marlo probably feels like I wasn't there for her, but I needed to be there for me. You're always there for you, Nene. You're always there for you. It's always about you. Marlo getting drugged by her, 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 you know, roots, by Kenya, you made it about you. You made it about you. You never once stepped to Marlo and whispered in her ear and said, let's play it cool. Do you have security? You know, like you just, you, I mean, um, and she was, then she got into talking about why apologize. She needs to know why she's apologizing. Weren't you there when the actions happened? Didn't you, weren't you a part of what was going on? Like, did this all just drop in your lap, girl? Or were you not present when all the foolery was going on? Like, I need to know why I'm apologizing. And um, no, no, it, it, Nene is just, <sighs> she's a piece of work. We see where um, she knows about the trip to Toronto Carnival because she met with uh, Tanya two days earlier. And, of course, Tanya comes and tells her and wants to invite her. And she's at this high energy level like she normally is. Like, we're going to Toronto, Canada for Carnival. And Nene is like, um, well, let me just think about it. I was like, yeah. She, in other words, she's got to muster up enough strength to be nice. And she just doesn't know if she has it in her. She just doesn't know. This is why I keep saying, quit giving this girl so much press. Please, please stop giving this chick so much press. Like, she really, really feels as though she does not have to be um, a genuine friend to anyone. She's just so fake and phony. She's just not authentic at all. Um, um, unless you consider her nasty attitude authenticity. Yeah, I guess she is. I guess this is really who she is. It's just a nasty piece of work. We go back to Portia and Marlo, and they are going past the um, hot dog factory. And Marlo just keeps pushing and pushing and pushing. She talks like kind of like a sickly dog. Come on, let's go in. Let's go in. It, it takes rocks to do her voice. I, I'm not even going to try to do it. But she's just got this really low, raspy type voice. And she just forces Portia to go in. Portia doesn't really want to go in. She wants her to go in. She really likes Dennis Marlo. She wants to call Dennis and tell Dennis that they're there. Um, and Portia is just like, I'm. let me call him and talk to him and just tell him and get it, you know, over and done with that I was in the building because one of the guys that was helping them asked where Dennis was. So they know who she is. Um, then Marlo tried to get her to say that he, that she loved him and Portia just was not having it. She was like, my feelings are valid. They are real. I will not have them, um, toy with I won't have them play with I'm not ready to tell him this and I'm not going to tell him this she just wouldn't give Marlo an inch and I was so proud of Portia for that I was so proud of Portia because I'm starting to believe that Marlo is definitely the one now I know they say Yovana did it that's completely possible too but the way she gets kind of picking 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 on Nini's behalf it's like in Nini's absence we're seeing so much more of Marlo I don't know why that's even necessary. 
other than the fact that she seems to be gathering a lot of information. So I wouldn't put it past her to to um to record. Um, again, we see where Cynthia and Mike and Eva and her might go and play this ridiculous game. I don't I get it. It was called pin and proper, where you throw a football at bowling pins. I don't understand these things. How do these businesses get off ground? Are they like pop-up shops? Like, I, I'm going to look that place up right now and see if they're still in business. Like, it seems like a ridiculous concept. The food better be amazing. Anyway, um, of course, they talk about long-distance relationships. Eva and her Mike did it for three years. They talk about marriage, the fact that, that um, Cynthia and her Mike have had conversations about it. Of course, Eva brings up Snake Gate because her Mike is a lawyer and just gets his opinion. Um, a person recording you while you, the two of you talk is not against the law in the state of Georgia. A person recording you uh, unbeknownst to you, like if they eavesdrop or put a listening device in your home or something like that and just and, and got information that way, that in fact is illegal. So Cynthia, don't she don't have a legal recourse. Why she would use it anyway, I don't know. She, she says she stands by whatever she said. She says she doesn't know if it's Marlo or if if it's Yovana, but it's got to be one of the two of them. Um, of course, we all know how Eva feels about Marlo. They also talk about, um, you know, it's going to be the mics against the models. They do this football thing. If the mics win, she, um, Cynthia has to move to Vegas or to, to Los Angeles if not, vice versa happens. It, it was a cute moment. He does seem like he really likes her. He defended her fiercely about this whole recording situation. It was, it was, it was a nice moment. I'm happy for Cynthia. I really, really am. And I hope that it's genuine and I hope that it works out. We see where Kenya goes to see the lawyer. She really just wants to secure her assets for Brooklyn. Everything that she owns and has that has value, that is a true asset. She wants to make sure she secures it for Brooklyn. Um, her home and things like that. Um, she has a couple of choices. She can do it in a will format, but that has some, um, some caveats to it that aren't necessarily favorable, or she can put it in a trust and she has to get a person that's going to kind of be over that trust in the event that she, you know, passes away and um i think she just started crying we do learn that she doesn't have a prenup and um we learned that mark is not an option for being a power of attorney in her mind because one of the producers asked i think she started crying in a lawyer's office because um and i can understand she's in a place where the Trying to find someone that you can trust without a shadow of a doubt to do what's right and not run off with your baby's money and not run off with her future and her legacy. And you go in and think and think and think and think and think about who you could put in charge of this, of this very, very valuable thing. And you can't come up with anyone, namely your husband. Namely, your husband. She broke down a little bit. I, I feel bad for her. I know people say this is all staged and all of this. I think even if it's all staged, it's a good lesson for us, especially women who um, have acquired assets and are at a particular age in life. You do have to start thinking about who is going to see about you, who is going to, who you're going to leave your home to, who you're going to leave your car to. Like, your 401ks, your all this stuff, if something happening tomorrow, you have to have a beneficiary. And it's important to be able to um, audit and tally and, and not come up wanting, you know, in terms of having people in your life that you can really, really trust and you can really, really depend on. Um, even when it comes to your own care, who's going to care for me? Who's going to look out for me when I get um, 
up, up, up in age and I'm not as mobile, you know, and I, and I have needs. If you don't have children or um, you don't have a spouse, um, these are things that you think about. So um, it was a crazy moment. Um, we get to the best part of the show, in my opinion, which was that counseling session with Dennis and Portia. When he walked in, I mean, she just had this look on her face. She was she was part little girl and part um, shy, awkward. Her demeanor was, she just, she was just, you know, she was just in this really, really unsure place. But I give it up for Portia. When Dennis went into um, sex being different, it wasn't the same way as when she wasn't pregnant and um, she had postpartum and they sat up and cried many nights um, together. You know, this is like his excuse as to why he could, he, he, he went outside of their relationship. And Portia doesn't have it. Portia's like, no, stop saying it's a mistake. A mistake is taking the wrong exit. I want to know why you did this. I want you to take full accountability for it. For, for it. Don't just put it back on me. Because she was like, we had sex just about every day of my pregnancy. Of my pregnancy. Now, maybe it wasn't dropping it and backing it up and popping it and locking it like you was used to. But you were still getting the goods, right? And the mere fact that you was with me through all of that is why hurt, it hurts me so much that you went out and did this. So... She did not let him weasel out. She did not take the easy route and just say, boom, I'm taking my man back. This is good enough. I've had enough. I'm taking it back. She's like, no. Either we're going to be in this thing for PJ, both of us 10 toes down together as a family, or we can continue to co-parent because I'm not going to raise her in a home where the daddy don't love the mama enough to be faithful or vice versa. I was like, boy, that was huge. That was huge to me. It was raw. It was emotional. It was honest. And the counseling to me was a good choice. It was a good route to take instead of us just listening to weeks and weeks of them go back and forth and argue and be melodramatic. It was this really honest moment where I could see Portia was able to let her guard down a little bit. When she said she doesn't tell him she loves him and misses him because she feels like that's giving him something, I know those feelings. I know those feelings. It's like you want to withhold all the goodness that you have from them as a punishment. And she was saying, I'm tired of that. I want you to know I care for you and I love you, but I also want you to know that this really, really hurt me. This really, really disappointed me. And I cannot ever have this again. I just full on, I hands down, I'm going to call MV, um, Portia the MVP for this season. Like You cannot deny that Portia has come so far. I mean, she's still funny and fun-loving. She's still a lot of who we love about her, about her personality and about her being on the show. But she has matured and she has become so much more solid as an individual. I really like Portia and I give it up to her. But that is the end of the episode. You guys tell me what you think about everything and put it down below. What do you guys think about this whole Kenya situation? Who y'all think did the recording? Y'all know Beautiful Soul did... Um, did a little research and, and according to her research, it's pointing to Yovano, uh, Yovano, Yovana be relevant. <laughs> I'm gonna make that word no matter what. Um, but the way the way Marlo was picking, trying to pick through Portia's closet full of bones, it could be, it could be Marlo. It could be Marlo. Marlo doing this would definitely get her get her ousted by the ladies. It would get her iced out by the ladies. So I'm leaning to the fact that it, it would be Yovana. Yo, Yovana be popular uh, um, is the more obvious choice. I just think Marlo know better. And plus Marlo ain't never needed no recordings. She would just either lie right out or tell your business right out and keep going. But y'all tell me what you think. Y'all put it down below. And until next time, honey bees. Mwah, mwah, mwah. I holler.